If you like this video, please go ahead and consider hitting that like button. Subscribe if you have not already, and please, by all means, share this video. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Farming Simulator 22 Map First Impressions video. Today, we're going to take a look at Klein Friesland. But before that, this video is brought to you by Mervin Nuts and Galcomp Gamer. Thank you for being farm barons. So the Klein Friesland map. You can find over at the farmingsimulator.com website or the in-game downloadable content menu. And as of the 1.0 release, this map is available for all platforms. Let me read you some of the description. Welcome to Klein Friesland. This map is based on an area around my hometown. I merged different scenery into one map and it is a standard size map. This map is mostly based on dairy farming, but it also has an arable farm with several fields nearby if you want to go that route. There is also a biogas plant located in the northeast of the map. Four greenhouses you can buy if you wish. Buildings on the farms and most fences around the map can be sold, but not all scenery and items are removable. The unbuyable land is also can also be bought if you wish to combine fields after filling in the waterways and or ditches. The map also comes with custom growth counter by Disturbed Simulations, which I modified to suit planting crops in the Netherlands. This map is recommended for use with small to medium sized tractors and equipment. On this map, you'll find 41 fields, two dairy farms, both of which have been prepared for the Realism add on animal grazing mod, one arable farm, a sheep pasture, also prepared for animal grazing if you're on PC, 46 farmlands, six cell points, three productions, four greenhouses, a BGA custom crop counter, 12 cheese collectibles and four areas to build out your own farm or productions. Now this map does have some required mods. Those required mods include the small bunker silo, old farm package, modern shed, cow shed three plus zero, meadow fence pack, Dutch shed pack, farm silo package, EU factories, mini biogas plant, forage dealer, crop storage pack, manure basin, farmhouse pack, Farmhouse Pack Volume 2, Front Shed, and the Dutch Shed. With that, let's go ahead and see what this map is all about. So in addition to those required mods, we're also going to be using our mods we normally use. When we take a look at maps, say our additional field info, additional game settings, animal food overview, field lease, field calculator, precision farming, and straw harvest. Now, we'll tell you, if you load this map up in farm, manager mode, or start from scratch, you're going to find the starting farm is built out exactly how you see it here in new farm mode. With the addition, you do have starting machinery in all game modes. Also, if you happen to be loading this map up on a lower end system, possibly one with a low end graphics card or integrated graphics, I can report that you should have zero issues whatsoever in running a nice solid 60 FPS. If you are having issues, then maybe go check out my video. I'll put an uptick in the upper right corner on basically low-end graphic settings that I would suggest. With that, let's go ahead and take a look at the PDA. Now, while this set is a standard size map, well, this map is a bit smaller than standard size. In fact, I would say this is probably a quarter size map as far as a standard size map is concerned. Now, as far as crops available, we are missing three crops where we do not have the ability to grow sugarcane, cotton, or olives on this map. We do have the other crops, so, and if you do have the premium expansion, you will be able to grow your carrots, parsnips, and red beets. If we take a look at our lands overview, you'll see we start by owning farmland ID 34, 31, 33. 33 is going to be where our starting cow farm is located, and that's also going to include fields 37 and 38, and then 34 and 35. As far as the other farms that are available on this map, we have a cow farm located at farmland ID 22. That can be bought for $530,000 in any alternate game mode. In addition, we have an arable farm located at farmland ID 15. That can be bought for $236,000. Now, the description said there was a single arable farm, but I'm going to count farmland 43 as an arable farm. It does have a farmhouse. It has some buildings. It does not have a silo per se, but we can buy this for a nice $22,724.
Now, in addition to those farmlands, there is a large sheep pasture that can be purchased at farmland ID 23. This also happens to be field 30, and that can be bought for $76,726. Let's go and take a look at our farmland lease screen. This is going to show us all of the viable farmlands. If those farmlands include any fields, what fields are included, how large those farmlands are, and then ultimately how much is that farmland going to cost us. We can now cross-reference that with our field calculator screen, and this is going to show us the sizes of each particular field. Now this map is making use of the Alpine soil map, so let's go ahead and see how that is being applied to these fields. Now the entire map is basically split into four segments with respect to these drainage or waterways, we'll just call them, we'll just call them waterways, all right? That's what they are, they're waterways. At any rate, the areas to the south of the waterway that's running east-west is gonna be mostly loam and silty clay with a bit of sandy loam over here to the extreme east and west. Meanwhile, areas to the north of that waterway are going to be predominantly more loamy sand and sandy loam. Here we can see our custom crop calendar or our modified crop calendar. And with respect to our prices screen, we do indeed have the ability to sell all of the crops that are included on this map. In addition, we do have the ability to sell our eggs, well, milk, and our silage, hay straw, and grass. As we continue down through all of the base game productions, we once again do indeed have the ability to sell all of our base game productions as well. With respect to bulk lime, we do have the ability to buy bulk lime, and we do not have the ability to sell our stones. So if you do play with stones enabled, you will need to put down your own stone sell point. Now, with respect to the farm production pack, we do not have the ability to sell our washed root crops nor do we have the ability to sell our premium expansion, sorry, platinum expansion production items. So if you do want to do a little bit of platinum expansion, well, you will need to put down your own sell points and production areas. With respect to the platinum expansion, we do have the ability to sell our productions and our crops. If you are playing with pumps and hoses, we do have the ability of getting rid of separated manure. And those playing with straw harvest do have an area of getting rid of your hay and straw pellets. We have a decent starting fleet given the size of this map and the size of these fields. All of the machinery is owned at the start. None of it is leased. Our cow farm on the starting farm does have 20 cows at the beginning, but do note that there is no food or water available to them. So you will need to feed them fairly quick in order to boost up their productivity. We do have contracts available on this map, and we do not own any of the eight production chains that are included in the map. And as the description said, there are 12 collectibles. Let's go ahead and take a look at that starting fleet. We start out with the New Holland T6155 small tractor, the Massey Ferguson 6718S medium tractor, and the Colossus Tryon 639 front loader. We've got the Amazon ZATS 3200 fertilized spreader. We have the Sholden, uh, we're not even going to go with that, the VT-130 slurry tanker and the Spider SP-6834 slurry applicator. We have the GMT-4411 side mower and the GMT-3123F front mower. We have the GF-8712 tether, the Semez Z2840H wind rower. We have the Rapid 580V forage wagon. The VB3190 round baler and the FarmTech DPW1800 bale loader. We have the Anderson Pro Chop 150 straw blower as well as the RA142 TMR mixer. We have the Dusseldorf 3000 silo compact roller. For our tractor, we do have the Quickie Q4M front loader arms. For the front loader, we have a fork grapple and bale spike. And then lastly, we wrap it up with a 1,500 and 600 kilogram front weight. With respect to mods and DLCs, this map does not have any custom vehicles or implements. Now, as far as our starting farm goes, we have our farmhouse located right here. 
And we then also do have a sleep trigger. Now, there's some interesting aspects of this map and of this starting farm with respect to farm customization. We can sell most of the buildings here on the starting farm, with the exception of the garage here. And then with respect to other things, well, various deco elements like these flower planters. The walkway, the rocks, the decorative planters there, they are all unsellable. Do have a fuel storage tank. Nice shed with most of our machinery stored. We have three pull through silage bunkers. One, two, and three. We have a storage silo here. This is one that we can buy product in for. And we're going to be able to store seed mineral feed available here. Now we can sell the silo, we can sell the bunkers, right? We can sell the rest of these sheds. But oddly enough, this pad here, this concrete pad area, it cannot be sold. So if you sell the silo, you're not going to be able to place anything down here until you enable free place mode. We have our manure heap. We're going to find our wheel loader positioned over here. Another silo. This is also going to store seed, solid fertilizer, and mineral feed this time. Our front loader arms. We do have six silage bales, as well as six hay bales and straw bales. Then we have our cow shed. Cow, as I said, already has 20 cows there. We can hold a total of 100. We have our milk trigger. And we have our food and straw trigger there. Our slurry trigger is going to be located here. And that is pretty much the starting farm. So let's go take a look at the second cow farm on the map. So we were down here at the first starting farm. Now we're up here to the second cow farm just south of field 19. And the main road, we're going to have a little bit of a lane here coming into this second farm. And from here, we have our farmhouse, which is also going to allow us to store a little bit of things in there, but it's not set up as an animal pen. Around the back, we have our sleep trigger. We have fuel storage. Nice few sheds here for vehicles and implements. We've got a pair of silos. And once again, these silos are going to store seed, mineral feed, or solid fertilizer. And that one. And this one is going to be seed and mineral feed. We have two three-sided silage bunkers. And then we have our cow building. And this particular building is going to hold another 100 cows. And we do have 20 at the start once we buy this area. We have our milk point. We have our food and straw triggers inside. And then, of course, our slurry trigger here on the other side of the shed. And that is pretty much the secondary cow farm. Now, I mentioned that I felt that this area here at Farmland ID 43 was an arable farm. It fit my description of an arable farm. And the fact that we do have a functioning sleep trigger for our farmhouse. We can enter the gates. And we have some, well, we have some machine sheds. We have diesel storage. And that's all we've got to go off of. So there is no silo here. You could probably place a small silo right there. And, well, you're off to the races. The arable farm that is probably the one that the map author is mostly considering is over here south of field 13. We have our farmhouse sleep trigger around the back. Here we have our road entrance. And then we're immediately presented with 
nice large shed here. In this shed, we can store our vehicles, implements, or we could dump grain in here if we wanted to. But we won't really need to because we do have a silo system that is located here. We have our dump and fill pipes. We have our fuel trigger. And then we have a pair of machine sheds. One here, more open. And this is going to be a three bay garage, if you will. And then the last kind of point of interest I want to come out to is here at field 30. This is the sheep pasture. So we have our water point. We have our food trough. We have our wool trigger. And while we have the icon for our animals down here, disregard this because it is not in the correct place. You're gonna have to come over here to the gate. And this is where we're gonna be able to buy our sheep. We have a total of 20 sheep here already, 19 white, one black, and we can store a total of 120. So that is an interesting caveat. This is where we're gonna to come to deliver our animals, as opposed to the fact that the trigger is located over here. You can try all day you want. You're not gonna be able to buy or sell any of the sheep from this location. Directly to the north of that, well, we have two medium greenhouses. These are two of the eight productions that are pre-placed on the map, right? So we have our pallet point, we have our water, we have our interactive icon. This one is simply rotated around. And these are standard greenhouses. They just require water and then they'll output their three standard fruits. Now that we're back here at the starting farm, I did want to do a visual fly around on the map. But one thing to note is if we take a look at our lands area, well, we can buy this little small spot here, farmland ID 45. That is going to represent this windmill. And if we buy the windmill, then we should be able to then sell it. Right next to our starting farm, we have our New Holland dealership. Let's go ahead and pick up our Mahindra. This will allow us to see where our vehicles and implements spawn. They spawn in the parking lot around the back. So a pretty nice sized area for your vehicles and implements to spawn. Given the size of these fields and this map. Then we have our service trigger here around the front as well. And it is indeed a dealer service trigger. So we should have no issues whatsoever in buy, sell, trade, and repaint. Further to the east, well, we have our animal dealer. We have our lime buying station. We have a bale selling station here at the animal dealer. And then we have our forage dealer all the way here at the back. This is going to be where that little arable farm is. The arable farm that's not an arable farm is going to be located. We do have access straight back here to this field there. In town, we have our bakery. The bakery is one of the eight productions. In addition to the bakery and those two medium greenhouses that we've already looked at, we have the dairy, BGA, a grain mill, and two large greenhouses. So we have an interactive icon around the front, dump station, and pallet point around the back. Here we're going to have a slurry basin so we're going to be able to store slurry right here and back over here we have our flour mill or grain mill if you will we have our dump point interactive icon and pallet spawn point coming up here we have our dairy so we have our dump point interactive point and our pallet spawn point we have our farmer's market sell point we have our grocery, and then we also have the two large greenhouses. 
Now right across the street from that. Well, there we have the large cow farm. In the extreme northeast corner of the map, we have the biogas plant. And this is going to be land that you will have to purchase in order to be able to make use of the biogas plant. And that's going to be located here at Farmland ID 36. And that can be bought for $116,000. We have four three-sided silage bunkers. And then we have our biogas plant. So we have our interactive icon, our digester, our dump point for slurry, our fill point for digestate. We have a methane filling station and an electric charging station here as well. Let's go ahead and hit check build mode and see if we can sell the BGA. Indeed, we can. And what's nice about that is the charging stations also vanish. And we sell our silage bunkers. It does indeed appear that we can indeed do that as well. But what we are not going to be able to get rid of are these other deco elements here. So if you do wish to reuse this area, you will be able to, but you will have to work around the various other elements. Also, just in case you might miss it, well, one of your floating cheese wedges are going to be up here at the BGA. Immediately behind the BGA, we have viable land where we can place productions, should we so wish. Let's make our way kind of diagonally across the northern part of the map. And we have another placeable area just to the east of Field 4. And that's going to be located right here. And we have a restaurant-style cell point. And then across the river waterway we have the two medium greenhouses we have our sheep pasture and we can sell the sheep pasture but when we do that all the triggers are going to go away and we're going to have two kind of openings here in the fence where our water and food troughs are located now with respect to our scoring system we're going to be giving the map full point with respect to production being built in because we have eight productions pre-placed and we also have the ability of putting down other productions. So here we have the arable farm that we already saw a little bit ago. And then right down the road from that, we're right back over here to our starting farm location. With addition to that, we are gonna be able to map another full point with respect to production, B or sorry, the ability to sell all of our base game crops, animal outputs, and productions. Now, as far as farm customization goes, well, we're going to have to take off a quarter of a point. It's not a huge deduction, but we are going to take points off because there were deco elements here at this farm, as well as over at a couple other areas that we just could not sell. And it would have been nice to have been able to sell those as well. With respect to buildings where probably are using the new texturing technique, we are going to give the map a full point there. I do feel that overall the buildings on this map are using the new technique. And then the ground textures look absolutely great. Let's go ahead and take a look here at our landscaping menu. And you can see we have a fairly modest list of textures. Most of them are standard, but we do have a couple custom textures here and there. And then with respect to our plants, fairly standard plants and also fairly standard trees now of course we will find custom buildings productions and animal areas because of the required mods that are included with this map lastly trigger interactive areas being clearly marked well we are going to have to take off a quarter of a point because well sadly sadly that is not where we're going to get our sheep we have to get our sheep from over here and unless you trial and error you just wouldn't know that because that icon is in the wrong place. So we are going to deduct a quarter point there. That's going to give this map a score of four and a half out of five. I'd love to know what your all's thoughts are down in the comments below with respect to this particular map. And until next time, happy farming.